<laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi. Nailed it. There we go. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Hopefully it was loud hey. enough that people could hear. But we are ready. Let's let's do this. Let's start it up. Everybody, you want this pun. Yeah. <laughs> Forces of nature. Okay. Everybody has exited from Danny's domain. You've left through this this almost ethereal combination of ethereal and natural gateway. Uh, Tommy is still clutching his injured hand from a uh, unfortunate fist bump slash uh, holding hands uh, with his new friend. Mm -hmm. Um, and as we continue through the forest area, basically the group have, they feel weirdly a, a combination of both rested and stressed at the same time after their trial that they have gone through together. You know, they feel physically prepared for what is to come, but if anything, they're still carrying almost a men more of a mental strain at the moment. They've all seen visions and unique interpretations of either their combined backstories of what or what is still to come uh, for them throughout this adventure. Naturally, they've been told by Dandy one of the next sort of milestones for them is to continue to gather the forces of nature together to ultimately work towards recreating the uneasy balance that had been against Kisera, how she's risen to power, how she's gained an unnatural strength level compared to her siblings, uh, quote unquote siblings. And they're making their way towards well off in the distance, very uh, almost like northern horizon area where they can see at the moment there's a large dormant volcano. At that time, there's a bit of smoke churning um, there's been a little bit of hype and a little bit of energy in the area since then because there's been a little bit more smoke in the area at that time, but it's not black. It almost looks like a very weakened, white, light gray type of smoke coming out of this. So people aren't quite sure exactly what that means in this area based on your local knowledge of, of this area and, and where you've been in. Um, the Oh, it's your family obviously been in and around this area. You've kind of you have an idea of what this landmark is, just in terms of trade routes and things out like there. But you're not quite sure what to make of it quite yet. Uh, Rian, you've probably done the most traveling uh, across different areas of where you've lived and where you've traveled uh, before. Nothing really stands out to you too much, uh, Bodak. Um, this is kind of a natural. You know, you're a bit more local a bit more closest to the a resident of this region. So how do you, how does that make you feel that smoke? Do you think that looks a bit unnatural? Is, is it even really noteworthy for you? What's your sort of thoughts on it at the moment? I see it and it's uh, definitely <clears throat> stirring up some emotions. I know that it's not, not normal to have smoke coming up through that, that volcano. It's seeming more active. Yeah, so you're kind of coming from the perception of it's been dormant a long time. It's probably never sort of gone off in your yes. lifetime. So the fact that anything's happened at all is probably of note for yourself. Okay. Coming out of the neck of the woods, you you know that really the, the next landmark to go is this mountain. It's a long way to go. It's on foot. It's You're probably talking between one and two weeks on foot you know there's a long distance to go along the way there's many things that can happen to you but you know the general direction that you have to go so it's up to yourself in terms of whether you guys want to sort of consider resting up and communicating and sort of regathering your thoughts on what's been going on or is there a, an impetus and, a, and an energy to the group that you just want to keep going forward what's your sort of thoughts as a group do do we have dano or any of the forest guardians coming with us towards this mountain? Because, okay. All right. Is everyone feeling healthy? We got everyone. We good I, to go or should we take a rest? I expended my, 
my uh, a couple of my spell slots. Um, those can be recovered with a short rest, though, right? I would consider them right now. That's part of that physical rest that you feel. You feel okay. physically. Yeah, up to date, we... everybody sort of feels physically recharged, for lack of a better term, without talking mechanics. These are all okay. up to date with everything. You're all filled up. Yeah, didn't uh, we come out of so... that ex experience like to a, a feast? Yeah, and there was, there was a little uh, okay. bit of betting and stuff at the after, yeah. but so 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 if anything, you, you can you all know that your bodies are ready to go. It's what's kind of how all your minds have been racked at the moment, and how you're sort of um, coping or compartmentalizing whatever <laughs> way your character would naturally sort of take on that information. Do you see it as uh, looming foreshadowing? Do you just see it as well? Aren't brains wacky? You know, crazy dream logic. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what the hell that means. Whatever way your character sort of would absorb that and um, continue to go. Yeah. Um, so this is looking at the group. This is a. This is kind of. I know this area. I was wondering, or uh, this is something that I can maybe figure out a good way up the mountain. Um, this is not normal. That that volcano is has never been active. Um, uh. Maybe we could take a short, or we can post up here, and then Logan and I could maybe scout and see if we could find a route. Because I know this area, and Logan knows forests. Indeed, or not, yeah. My family traded in this region. I could, I, I know some roads uh, that will get us, you know, relatively close to the to the mountain. Uh, the yeah. issue is the the distance. Um, do we? check with the village uh see if they have any animals any horses or uh, d radishing would uh, would we know of any uh would i know of any villages or towns along the way that we might be able to stop at for yeah you've you you have some recollection just because of your history because although you can have, he have heard of the trade routes you weren't as directly involved with them as as you know so you do believe that there is a town north of here probably half a day away uh not too far away and you do know this road being it can be relatively busy in terms of footfall or traffic so it seems to be a relatively well-established area coming up you can't quite remember the name at the moment if you wanted to do a a history check history. you might be able to remember something uh, i also do a survive well, look, you could also do one as well because you you. No, you I was going to ask if I could do a survival check to maybe figure out the best route either to the village or. Uh, well, I'm going to let him do the history check first. I, th I think that's a good one. To, I think it's a good one a, to follow up with. I got a twelve. You got a twelve. Cool. I, th there's a one word name that's kind of popping into your head. It's it, it, it kind of sounds like a, like an adjective or an emotion. It's kind of on the tip of your tongue, but you're not you're not able to grab that thought yet. It's kind of circling through your brain at the moment. So you get the feeling you'll kind of know it when you see it. Yeah. You'll be like, ah, oh, yeah, that, that's what it was. But at the moment with that, it's sort of on the tip of your tongue. Yeah. I'll share it with the group. I think, I think there's a village north, like a day from what I can remember about old trade routes. I think we can, we can find a village on our way to the mountain headed north on this road. Relatively safe. Should be a lot of people on it. You know what? You're right. Grab... I think I think I remember that village too. I just can't can't quite remember what the name of it is. Ah. Hollister, 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 American Eagle. Ah, uh, what was it called? Tom, Tommy's like uncharacteristically quiet. He's he kind of has his head down. He's rubbing his hand. Uh even though we've had a night's nice rest after the the whole mind trip we had he it's still to him fresh on his mind so he, he at the moment is kind of just a follower like if people say go east he'll follow the group east if they say let's go straight up a mountain he'll follow but he's not really putting any input he's just kind of head down in his own thoughts is the uh the village on the way to the the mountain so to speak it's in it's in the same direction we're headed north we should be able to pass the village and not go out of our way all right. Can I do a survival check to see if I can 
if I know the best route to the. Yep. I mean, I know he said it's the uh, the road, but I don't know. Maybe I yep. know a better one. Let's see, eleven cool. plus where is it? Survival two, three. So I got a fourteen. Yeah. So <coughs> although a lot of your experience is the is the waterways in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you probably know of it more because there's a pretty decent fishing spot, actually, uh, in this in this town. Uh, you know of that along the way, and you also remember that there's quite a few main roads going in that general direction. It's it's, it's a bit of a hub. Yeah. So a lot of that sort of recognition um, yeah. aligns with what Claude is saying. All right. Yeah. So we, I know a good fishing spot on the way if we want to we want to stop. But I think you're right. Let's just take the road to the the village perfect perfect we wouldn't agree uh yep is ready to go now or are you just thinking of um doing anything else along the way does anybody else want to do anything before you kind of make tracks i can't think of anything my imagination is rusty <laughs> Yeah, I'm good. Dusty, dusty, you know, they're they're two very two very common words <laughs> to get mixed up, you know. So, you know, so. <laughs> feeling a little hungover from being in the ground and having some dreams. That that's like one of those moments of like a spy who's a bad spy, and he's like, his real name's Dusty, but uh, but he's like, uh, I'm Rusty. My name is Rusty. <laughs> like <laughs> like trying to come up with a fake name. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so uh, the mystical being that is the DM will remember being described as a bad spy. Okay, <laughs> cool. Uh, there'll be no repercussions for that whatsoever. Okay, um, that's good. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> Tommy, there's a, a slight dark weather cloud just floats over Tommy for a brief second and then dissipates. <laughs> it got a bit of a chill there. Okay, cool. So basically, as, as, as you travel, so you're you're in quite a dense forest at the moment. But uh, Bodok's tra- you know survival check as well has helped identify what looks like the most uh, well used walking path. In that, it's pretty much still going north, maybe very slight uh, north north east. You know, sort of angle to it. It's not necessarily directly, but it's still going in the general direction that you guys want as you're going forward. Okay, uh, march in order. Who basically wants to be at the front of the line? Let's go two by two. Who's the two at the front? Who's the two at the middle? Who's the two at the back? I'm, I'm well, definitely, definitely in the back. The front. Uh, silent, or, sorry. The, 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 the sailor and I, we're in the back. <laughs> there you go. Tommy, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be right behind Claude in the front. Yeah, I think I'm oh. after that. I don't know where we're going. Okay, so Claude and Viator up front. Is that okay? Yeah. Or or you Logan, you said you were gonna be in the back? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you did the funny. Wait, who did the uh survival or the That was Boduck. That was me. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Boduck, okay. so do you wanna be up front with me since we're guiding? Yep, yep, that was what my intentions were. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Cool. So we've got uh, Rian and Viator in the middle, Bodak and Claude up front, Tommy and uh, Hap, uh, sorry, um, no, Logan. Uh, Logan's at the back, Bodak's at the front, uh, Viator at the, in the middle. Sorry. I must get the actual names up on this again. <laughs> it kind of goes on that there. Okay. So basically, I, you're, you're trotting along, sort of normal enough pace. Uh, as we are going along, basically, you're hearing uh, lots of birds chirping. The further you get away from the, the neck of the woods that you were at, you know, life seems to kind of return a little bit more normal to this. There's almost like a, a, a passive um, energy building up as you leave this particular doorway area of the forest and we're making your way towards the north north east direction of this path um as you're going along basically as you as this is happening you've kind of got to about midday sort of one two o'clock in the afternoon and you're transitioning your way throughout the throughout the area uh Buddha, you're starting to pick up a couple more sort of not sort of um 
smells and the different other senses in the area. You know, you have an idea. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This this is uh, actually a pretty good wee, pretty good wee spot here. Um, you know, there's some pretty pretty decent catches that have been made here in the day. You haven't personally been to it, but you've heard about this probably from people telling stories. You know, you can you know images in your head of like oh the one I caught was this big. Yeah. Uh, as as you go along that sort of area. Sounds good. Okay. Can I do a perception check then to see if I know exactly where that is? Yeah, indeed. We got perception. That's an 11. So, uh, what's your history? History? It would also be 11 with that rule. Yeah, so the visual that you're starting to sort of remember when it comes to this water is that there's a walled village, a walled town near this fishing spot. It's not just a random lake. Uh, mm. It's almost like an artificial lake. Um, so that's what you're coming up to at the moment. And as you progress, as we said, it's pretty level field work and, and ground. There's some slight hills and valleys as you go along. Nothing crazy, nothing that you're really strenuously working your way towards as you go along. And you start to see some walls build up into the distance as you're making your way towards um, towards this town. Claude, you're starting to see it. The letter F is coming to you. Um, that's 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 the start of that word. It's like it's re- it's starting to get there. It's really into food. you're thinking of like an adjective or an emotion or something. Begin with F. You're not quite sure um, as you're going along. Okay. Uh, want to keep the same order? Just keep going towards that wall town, or does anybody want to sort of stop, do anything in particular? I don't want to necessarily rush people in a direction, but um, don't want necessarily paralysis by analysis for giving you way too many options <laughs> either, because otherwise you're going to start overthinking me. Why is why is he asking? Why why is he asking? Why? <laughs> yeah, what's what treasures in the in the hillside? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a closed door in the middle of the road, isn't there? <laughs> no, that was last time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's one thing I want to talk about, uh, if everyone can get in the circle. Um, yeah. I haven't been fully honest with everybody. I've been using a code name, and uh, my code name is Viator. My real name is Taluma Scalador. And I, I waited till I fully trusted everybody. And to reveal that. And I wanted to say the moments I started trusting everybody was when Claude and Rion rescued Jarvis and they helped Thomas. Happy, or um, sorry, <laughs> Logan, Logan when he rescued the puppy. Uh, Bo when we spent the night together. And then Thomas, I'll use his real name now, <laughs> uh, <laughs> when he was interacting with Azir. I, I think I can trust you guys. Um, so my real name is Tillumas. Can I do, I did a history, I rolled, uh, I was hoping to do a history track to see if I know who he is. Sounds like he's trying to make it so that he's, he might be a little infamous, so. And what'd you roll? Oh, okay, I was just making sure I was allowed. (laughs) 17. Anything you want? Yeah, 17. Uh, Anything. Yeah, Tillumas, anything. What's probably one of the first things that might sort of stand out to you? Maybe that you don't um you maybe aren't necessarily immediately connected with but what may people know you in relation to either an occupation or a particular event what why Bod- why may bodak know you and if he doesn't doesn't matter how good somebody rolls if they just don't know you they don't know you um i i have a deep religious background and i studied with um religious historians and you may know me from my religion um, I was captured by pirates, um, hence the, the distrust I have in Thomas. Um, I don't think I was there. <laughs> it definitely worked, but I'm very sketched out by pirates. Very untrusting. But I, the way you interacted with Azir, I, I, I think I can trust you. I put, right. I put out a hand like to do one of those like, uh, like glass grasping. Yeah. Finally, we shake it. And I can use your real name, Thomas. <laughs> Thank you. So, Bodak, what, what you're probably most likely recognizing is that although it might not be your area of expertise, 
It's yeah. probably one of those names where it's it's kind of one of those names that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um, in a similar way that even if chemistry is not your chemistry is your field, but somebody's quite big in physics, mm-hmm. you kind of know all of it, but you don't really know anything really in depth of it. So it's potentially yeah. something you recognize, but you're not quite sure exactly why because you don't know enough about the area. So why are we keeping it a secret? That's what I want to know. So I, with my history, I I think it's hard for me to be trusting people. No, um, I've heard your name. I just don't know. I can't put it to, I never could put it to a face, but I just, I don't see why. What's the, thank what you very is much the for follow. I appreciate you, uh, it. What are you afraid of? Um. So un- unknown captor captured and killed my wife and my son so i'm very distrusting of new people um so i just i i I wanted to wait to reveal my name like when we became a family i think is when i really trusted you guys kind of weird to follow a bunch of strangers then if you're so weary of them yeah i wanted to help out um i i try to i try to be as good as i can Hmm. Um, it sounded like you guys needed help. And what it just like out of character? What's the spelling name again? Uh, hold on, I'll read it. Yeah. I spelled it like Tacoma, but with an L. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I spelled it. E E L U M U S Tulumus Galador G A L A D O R Tulumus. Galador. I'm gonna change that in Discord too now. Nice. Wait, 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 wait. Don't change change... character. I thought it would be fun to like do like a mystery. Like I, I, I didn't want to be known just yet. It's a lot taken. Yeah. So we, a, as we call, we call you Tell. Huh? Can we call you Tell? Yeah. We're friends now. Whatever you want. Yeah. We're friends now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of as we do like the, the like big arm handshake i i give a nice to meet you and then uh, uh you know almost like we're meet, technically like meeting for the first time that we're not because i i had gotten like the vibe off of you that you didn't like me and i just kind of rolled with it like I, I, I just rolled with it but now i see that you were cautious and i understand mm, mm, mm. what Clyde once can Clyde do an insight check just make sure there's no Hostility. I mean, he's he's a little shaken by the the revelation. Even though he he trusts Palumas, he likes Palumas, but he's he's distrusting. Yeah, uh, and then in the back at, of his head. So <laughs> then, at the same time that you're doing an insight check, uh, Palumas, could you roll a deception check and just tell me the numbers that you both get? Yeah, seventeen. Also, if I'm proficient, does it change? What is it? It should. There should be a wee dot on your mm-hmm. score sheet, and that should automatically be making the modifier too higher than your normal charisma modifier. Um, another thing that I want to hide my name for. I just thought of this. Sorry. Uh, another thing I want to hide my name for is I just don't want people to find me either. So I just make sure I let people know my name who trust me. Who's yeah, I have you? no hesitations with him. I'm very much connecting with the story and uh, tell um like really sorry about your family. I know how much it hurts to lose everyone. Thank you. Thank you. It was it was hard on me. Um, yeah, I just I, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure I know who killed who ordered the the kill killing of my my wife and son and so i try to remain as anonymous as possible but help where needed can i do an investigation what yeah what does barking dog sound can i do an investigation to figure out if i know where that sounds come from yeah uh five 
<laughs> I'm, you also, think it's a dog? Gotta, I'm also gonna investigate and i got a 13 yeah. I'm, I'm still yeah. in my feels i'm not focused t- 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 tommy thinks it's a dog um uh, but he's maybe he's wondering is it cats that actually the bark i don't know i don't know he's not quite sure he's trying to remember so he's, he's, he's a- lost in thought at the moment i got a 14 uh, on that team yeah uh, so there's definitely a dog barking <laughs> um and you can see that there's some long grass out in front of you and there's a little path in the long grass that's just you know where you can see it's something's running in between it and it's running quite quickly in your general direction at, at this stage is maybe 50 yards away from you and the tall grass ends about 10 feet in front of you what do you do oh no uh, uh, logan is going to draw his bow and knock an arrow but not shoot yet just aim in the <laughs> yeah Claude instinctively raises his shield just Stands in front of the group. Uh, I'm gonna. I can I. I'm gonna use a. Can I? I'm gonna hide behind it, like the closest tree. <laughs> but not forward? not hiding. Not hiding. <laughs> more positioning rather than hiding. <laughs> so putting putting a tree between me and whatever is possibly coming. <laughs> what I think could be a cat or a dog coming through. Cool. The <laughs> so, can I roll for animal handling? In in one second, uh, just with regards to um, Tommy's tree theory, if there was a tree, <laughs> you'd be perfectly hidden behind it. The closest thing you can hide behind is the very end of the tall grass in front of you. In tall the direction grass, of the barking. I'm going to just stand my ground then. I'm not going to hide. Damn hero. Yeah. <laughs> is it coming at the people in the front or is it coming at all of us from the side? Just there's one line in front of you and it's coming straight in front of you. About okay. how far is it? Fifty yards, closing oh, fast. Closing and fast. And the end of the tall end of the tall grass is by ten feet in front of you. I mean, we unfortunately strategically moved from a very strong uh, row of fighters to a semi-circle talking group, and we are now very vulnerable for, oh, <laughs> for attacks. True. So we, we were kumbaya held in hands, and this is what we get. Um, can I cast shield on Tommy? Yes. You can indeed. Uh, Tommy, uh, in front of you, this projection of a shield appears, but only Rian at the moment uh, knows what it looks like. So she's going to describe how how her shield spell looks when it's emblazoned in front of you. Uh, it's like kind of the visible swirling wind with little crackles of electricity in there. I st- I stand a little straighter. I feel puff, I puff my chest a little bit. Like I feel a little more more protected. What? Well, yeah, I protected you because <laughs> I, I the rest of the group I feel okay with, but I'm a little worried about you. You said you were still feeling a little of, of last night, and I, I just want to make sure that if you're not on, quite on your game right now, that just because I don't know if it's you're good. If a cat's a cat and a dog, see anything a dog. on the screen now? <laughs> Oh, oh goodness! Companion, this, whisper this little guy. This beautiful any- little dog, black and white, big ears, bigger than almost bigger than its head, comes charging out, and it's it's hyper. And for for a split second, it's like it's like happy to see you, but it's also kind of worried and it's very agitated and it's like <laughs> chicken and stuff. So, I uh. I pull some. I pull a little bit of meat out of my inner coat pocket from the feast last just, night. Just, just one second, Tommy. Uh, Logan, I believe, was doing an animal handling oh, check. Yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't. Beator was. Oh. Well, formerly known as Tell. Oh, Tell. Tell. I Tell. Sorry, was... animal handling check. Sixteen. Cool. What would you? What would you? How would you like to interact with this dog? Hey, buddy. What are you doing? Can I help you? <laughs> and- he and the dog is like it's it's happy and it kind of goes on its belly and does that sort of like crawl forward towards you on its belly and it's coming towards you but you can still tell it's like it's really really shaky uh and it's like the, the butt's wiggling um you can see something dangling around its neck like something okay. with a little bit of shine on it but it's it's got a very agitated look about it okay i'm uh say hey come here buddy and i, I reach with an underhand reach and make sure i'm not a threat yeah. And uh, I reach for the thing on its neck. 
Cool. Uh, this thing gives your hand the biggest lick in the world. Like it is just, <laughs> it is just, it's, it's, it's loving that little bit of attention, but you can see its eyes are very, very wide, but it's not an aggressive wideness in the eyes. It's, it's definitely like almost a little bit of panic. When you look at the tag, you see the name Tobin. Tobin. A little Tobin, Tobin fall down the well. Tobin. Tobin. <laughs> Hearing, hearing his name, it looks it, like it's looking at anybody that says his name, and it's like it's super. It's just, it's it's kind of wiggly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rian is uh, finally not so gloomy and depressive, and y'all have never seen yeah. Rian act like this before. It's yeah. so cute. Uh, Tommy, you had a you were getting a bit of meat out of your pocket. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna give uh give him a little bit of meat or like try to cool. feed him. Tobin sees the meat in your hand and, and he and he sees you and he runs straight towards you and all of a sudden he just has this moment where his head just bangs against this is a shield that was in front of you. <laughs> and it's just looking a little, little bit dazed. Um drop the shield. There's there's a there's a like a little bit of a whimper from it. Like, <laughs> but back to being sort of anxious and stuff, and you can see it's like it's almost kind of it's standing on his two legs and it's kind of clawing on the on the shield, can I um, can I step around it? Around yeah, the shield, or does the so shield yeah. something that stays like stays with like with me for a period of time? I, yeah, I, don't worry. You you, you can just drop it. You, you yeah. can just drop it. Yeah, don't worry. It's <laughs> you're <laughs> trapped in the shield. <laughs> Let me out. <laughs> this is mine. Yeah, the invisible force field. You can never yeah. pet the dog. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, a, my worst fears come true. <laughs> Cool. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, so you can step around that. You've got you've got a wee bit of you know, wee bit of jerky, wee bit wee bit of meat from the the rations. So we we have a very excitable yet ex yet anxious dog that's got unfortunately a bump in the head, but is still wiggling his butt a lot, and has basically taken this little bit of meat or, or rationing and just gobbled it like, blah, blah, blah. like it, it just sat there and it was looking at you. It was being really really patient, and it. Only edit when you actually like almost had to like insist that it, that it eats it. But when it did, it gobbled it up really, really quickly. Who's was a yep. well-behaved boy, and I give him like one of these yeah. on the on the ear yeah. side of the head. And he's loving it because, in particular, right behind this ear, it's like oh, I think he's getting that slight wee twitch on it. Um, but he basically he looks at you. He goes bark, 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 like like he. We're looking right at you, bark, 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 and he turns and he blitzes it through the tall grass again, and you can tell that he's making his way towards that wall, the town, and there's also a small shack a little bit off to the right, and you can see that the, the line in the tall grass where this little dog is running through is going towards that shack before the, the walled village. Oh, okay, so we're within eyesight. And as, and, and, and as it's going, it's still going, bark, 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 bark. But because it looks at everybody, obviously we're going to follow that dog, right? <laughs> it's on our way, either way. <clears throat> There's two out-of-character things in my head. One, Tommy's stuck in the well, and two, <laughs> two, we're about to enter high grass, and I swear, if bump starts playing, <laughs> a Pokemon encounter is going to happen. <laughs> but yeah, but... Uh, I just, I, I just think of the second Jurassic Park movie. Stay out of the long grass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so Bark and Dog, you can see the row where he's going through the tall grass, making his way towards a small shack. All right, well, let's go, guys. Oh, guys let's see, we just, follow that dog. Yeah, Clutch starts moving after he sees. Oh. Cool. Well, Sorry, before we head out, can I give my world famous belly rubs? <laughs> dog, you, that could, dog's gone, man. To us, yeah, the could, dog's, that gone. dog's gone. That dog's <laughs> gone. Dog. You missed your opportunity. <laughs> Dang it. This is your so motivation. So you're running to give belly rubs, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, to Tobin. <laughs> They've become world famous, you <laughs> hear? Oh, you need belly rubs! <laughs> he just, <laughs> belly rubs. <laughs> belly rubs! <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay, if... so Tobin is bust through the grass, making his way there. Uh, there's about 100 feet of tall grass in between. You can tell it just, it was a field. 
looking at this sort of field, you can tell that the, it looked like a vegeta vegetation, but this tall grass has almost kind of started to be taken over by some weeds here and there. You can probably tell it did look like some relatively ripe farmland, um, but maybe just not the most optimally maintained at this moment in time. Run towards the shack. I'm going to head straight for it. Just try to follow more or less the same path. Make sure there's right no, behind like, them. Mm -hmm. Pits in the cool. ground or something I want to break my leg on. Okay, cool. Uh, I'd like everybody to do athletics checks. Hell yeah. Hopefully. Proficiency. Oh, good. That's a seven. I thought it was a one. Uh, <laughs> what was it? Athletics? Yeah. 15 for Logan. I got a nine. 19. Eight. Okay. Yeah, cool. Everybody above 10 has got about 40% of the way through the grass. Everybody under 10 has got about a quarter of the way through the grass. Go again. Oh, that's, that's a bull crap. Again? Again. Go again. I got a five the first time. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ooh. I got a four. I also got, I got another nine. <laughs> so I got, I'm halfway. <laughs> 13. <laughs> Eleven. Uh, <laughs> what also so, twenty? So, who's got over ten again? This time I did. Who's, who, I who, who, who's got over ten twice on both rules? Me. Also Logan. Claude. Claude and Logan. Claude and Logan. You were kind of at the front of the pack anyway. Um, you're making your way to there. You're starting to see the shack. You're also starting to hear some water, sort of just lopping. Like almost against, you know, like if you were walking near a beach or a calm lake. Really it's making your way to towards spot. that. Bodoc's starting to recognize. He's starting to think, yep, there you go. It's coming towards the fishing spot here. Uh, Claude and Logan, you're starting to see more and more of the building. And you can now see that Tobin has made it through the other end of the grass and is making a beeline straight for the other side of the little cabin or shack. So he's, he's ran around the corner. And now you can just hear him barking again. Flogon stops at the edge of the tall grass, not exposing himself and remaining hidden. And yep. kind of creeps around slowly around to, to see behind the back. Well, will take okay. the corner with his shield up, like yeah. cautiously, not like sprinting around, but like. Yeah. Okay. So Claude Appreciate has exited the tall grass. Yep. Yeah. Yes. You've exited the tall grass, you're making your way towards the building, kind of prepared. Okay. How are you feeling, Claude? Are you feeling exposed? Are you feeling anxious? What are you, or are you just sort of more concerned with getting towards Tobin? What are you thinking? Uh, Logan's got your back. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I haven't heard anything besides the dog barking, so I don't think there's an immediate yeah. danger, but just rounding a corner without knowing what's behind it, just being prepared to like brace myself for impact or whatever I might see. The other four have seen Claude exit the tall grass. They've seen, they haven't seen Logan exit the tall grass yet. So maybe you just think he's out in front. Um, Rain, although she was incredibly proficient in the water, is still well behind uh, in the grass. <laughs> um, but super excited to see the dog. Like, probably the excitement of seeing the dog is just more distracted than anything. She's kind of fallen into some wee rabbit holes along the way. That's sort of, let myself know, go in summer thorn. <laughs> <I'm not> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you're wondering, has Danny planned this tall grass as a bit of a mini revenge? Those wee thoughts are coming into your head uh, as you go along. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go. Tommy, Rian, uh, Tell, and Bodak. What are you guys doing? Are you uh, rocking up beside Logan, you going out towards Claude. What's your sort of thoughts? Oh, I yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna exit the tall grass as soon as I can get there in like five minutes. I'm like tripping, <laughs> tripping over everything, just being pulled well, pulled. Okay, perfect. Um, so, can oh, I this is the list? first masterpiece. This is the first masterpiece. Look at it. Look at it. It's good. Is the green stuff the grass? Oh wait, so we okay. No, no. so you're in, in the wall. So um wait, that's in the wall. Okay. I see. Let, let's imagine this is tall grass, perfectly placed just outside the uh, edge of it, and has nothing to do with me making up that there's tall grass just then and there. Right? It's it's clearly just off the picture. 
right? This is planned, right? Uh -huh. Planned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much planning. Uh, but you can see basically the shack. Uh, Claude is making his way towards this corner. Let's zoom that in a little bit because you don't need the rest of this at the moment. Um, Claude is making his way towards this near corner. Yep. Can I maybe start to eke his way around here? Uh, Claude, you're kind of seeing there's a little bit of a harbor, very, very small port in there. Uh, there's some, you're starting to see some fishing rods in there. Um, that you know, difference in ages. Some of them look like they're kind of new. Some of them look like they've been there a little while. Bit of a variation in that. Um, who's joining Claude? Who's sticking with Logan? Uh, as soon as I get my cloak unstuck from the brush, I'm gonna follow up behind Claude. That, that makes sense. That was clearly what was holding you back. I Is there understand. a door to the shack that I can knock uh, on? Not on this side. Oh, okay. So not not that you can see at the moment. I am holding a cramp in my side and just chilling in the back and catching my breath. <laughs> <sighs> He's so fast. He's the fastest dog. Uh, I'm going to go around I'm, and try to find the door. I'm staying, okay. I'm staying in the grass. I don't, cool. I just well, like, I don't feel like we're in danger yet. Uh, I love the word yet. Um, <laughs> I mean, we found a friendly <laughs> yeah. dog. He just bolted through the grass. We're near a village. Like I knew there was a wait. All right. The worst that could happen. But like, as know. you turn the corner, Tobin comes back towards you. And he's kind of jumping on you. He's like super excited. Like, there's almost a kind of excited whimper. Like, oh, 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 oh. oh, okay. He's... But he runs back to where he is. But as you do, you start <laughs> to hear a little bit of a cough. <coughs> Sorry, that's me. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's a, it. Was a great cough impression, Bodak. I love it. Yeah, that's exactly what you heard. Uh, and basically, as you turn around, you're making your way towards this cough. It looks like it's coming from this corner. Uh, do you continue the rest of that corner and follow where Tobin's going? Yeah, I get the sense now, he's not just being friendly, that Timmy is stuck in the well. Okay. Cool. As the second masterpiece, uh, as you get to the door, um, you see this individual, and Tobin is basically lying beside he's got his head on his lap um based on the size of this goblin tobin's actually kind of close to his size uh, mm -hmm. you'd almost imagine that when you look at the back of tobin there was actually a tiny tiny little saddle uh that was actually part of his gear um <laughs> on this and this individual he's just this the breathing is really really slow really slow all right so i see that Claude, Claude, over on the, uh, over here, quick. I'm not surprised. It's a goblin, right? Yeah. This is me out of character. Yeah. So, like, I'm Bo's not taken back by any any kind of creatures or like scared to interact with them. Um, he's gonna he's gonna do a medicine check to see if he can figure out because he sees that he's or, yeah yeah. See how severe it is. See if I can do right. anything. Yep. Sorry, I forget. That's okay. Six plus medicine. Eight. Oh. oh. You can't. You can't see. You can't really make much of a diagnosis. But the most obvious stuff that you're starting to see there is that there's been, unfortunately, quite a bit of blood loss on this yeah. left arm. Is he um, conscious? There's, there's no harm there. The breathing is incredibly slow. If anything, you, you're probably not expecting this guy to be around for a while. There's just been so much blood loss. You can see that the blood loss actually carried around the other corner of oh, the no. shack. Um, what you do notice, though, is when you look at his, his feet, like the tops of his feet and like his sort of shoulder areas, there looks to be like a weird, which is not on this picture, like a weird fluff. Like a brown, like almost like brown sort of hair. It looks like it's on top of him. It's not actually in his skin. Um, and under the hair, there's a unusual drawing or a sketching on that that you can't see at the moment because there's just a lot of hair in the way. Is he conscious? Barely conscious, uh, but you haven't made any attempt to sort of revive him yet. Okay. Uh, Claude, uh, Claude rushes up to do a quick lay on hands 
because uh, Talumis can probably do more, but he wants to get at least see if he can get him out of a critical condition, I guess. Yeah, yeah. probably. If, if anything, before you do that lay on hands, you're going to see that there's just been so much blood loss to the side. Mm -hmm. You can still do it if you maybe want to try to stabilize a little bit, but you probably get the feeling, Claude, if anything, it's just more of a ease his passing if you want to use it in that yeah, Claude, sense. Put him out of yeah. his misery. I, I, I'm still going to try. Claude's, Claude's still going to try regardless yeah, yeah. of how hopeless it looks. Yeah. Okay, cool. So go with lay on hands. Um, and give me an idea of how much you heal for. Just to give me an idea yeah. of how much happens after that. Uh, probably about half of my pool. Five. Yeah. See if I can heal five hit points. Five. Cool. So for a very brief moment, it's almost like a mini shot of adrenaline. Yeah, some like, oh, yeah. he's got a, he's sort of a squeaky voice. Uh, and if anything, while he's still in the days, he just goes, uh, squeak, uh, squeak, um, <laughs> kind of a... squeak, uh, oh, oh, Tobin, <laughs> Tobin, my boy. Oh, my, oh, my faithful little boy. You're going to be okay, pal, but I'm. He looks up and sees you guys, and the fear and the recognition just as he sees you, he's like, Oh, guys, come on. It's come on. No, it's just. Just leave, just leave Tobin out of this. This is between you and me. It just. It just. Uh, it just. Are you the same one I, from the basement? What happened to you? He's gone, Claude. Uh, Tobin. This... Tobin. He tried. I think this was the the same guy from the basement. <clears throat> I think so too. I, I recognize entered. those squeaks. <laughs> can Can I try something? Because it's I'm really interested in knowing what he's doing here. Can I use shocking grasp to try to jumpstart his heart again? I think he's sure he can. can. <laughs> he sure can. We can do anything. Okay. You can certainly try. I got five. Let's get some more squeaks out of this guy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So basically, just get a. Um, did you do any sort of a you know proper procedure? Did you tell anybody to clear before you did shocking, shocking grass? Because there's a dog laying on him. <laughs> Ryan, you yeah, yeah, stop we shoot the dog away. We shoot the dog. Oh, yes. Oh. Yeah, good, good, good. good. Okay, good. You, you shoot the dog away. Um, probably the closest thing that Tobin has come to looking a little bit angry is you pushing him away from his from his master, but he'll be okay. Yeah, at, le at least that's enough to sort of get him away. So thankfully, you don't shock the dog <laughs> that's lying on top of, of 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 this guy, and you just see the chest kind of go, and it's like a very like he's back a little bit. He's super duper dazed. He's not really the eyes aren't focusing on anything. Um, but if you wanted to sort of ask anything in particular, you probably you probably have one shot to ask something and acknowledging how bad of a state this guy is. In. Who who are you? Why are you here? Who sent you after us? That's three questions. I'm just barreling questions because yeah. I really yeah. want to know, yeah. and I know it's been a very yeah. intense yeah. situation. Yeah. yeah. Maybe somebody else needs not, to step in and negotiate not, this. Not you. <laughs> you just, yeah. Not you. You disturbed us. Just business. Big money. Gone. I console Tobin. Yeah, Tobin's oh. whining now. Yeah, he's definitely like, <laughs> and he just just battles up on top of the the goblin, and just he's just not moving. I say to uh... why am I crying? <laughs> Illumis, is there anything that can be done? Is it is it too late? What does he mean by business and money? 
Is there a hit out on somebody here? Is he a oh, rapper? Just got a, a reveal of Tell. Oh, yeah. Could it be business about Tell? Do you know if you're being chased after actively? He's dead. Telemus? Oh, not that. <laughs> Tell's not dead yet. <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. That's why I try to. You die on me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got a spell. In the, I got a spell with my hip. If we can try it, I don't know if he's already dead. Are you gonna try to bring him back again? <laughs> let him scare the let dying. Let Poor guy. He, he, he <laughs> died let twice now. But yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Forty-five minutes later, what if I try? <laughs> Just okay, let him is die. He meant to be dead, or can we <laughs> make dead. him live? You can do. You can do anything. But at the end of the day, you're, live, just, you're still dealing you. with the circumstances. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, at the end of the day, there's no thing is supposed to be like there, there's things that can happen and there's you know things like you know without going too behind the curtain you know there's the time that took to get there and what was happening and you know and almost sort of we mini timers and things and at the end of the day there was a bit of damage that was done even regardless of you guys being around or not so um look on what do you what are you at least thinking of doing I mean, I'm gonna. I mean, now that I see that there's really no danger, I do approach the rest of the group. No danger. This dude's dead. Oh, I mean, but whatever killed him is clearly gone. Oh, I was it? gonna say, can we do like an investigation? We've not. We've not around? looked around the area yeah. at Maybe all. Maybe follow a trail of blood. Or something? We, yep. Yeah. Can I do a perception oh. check to see if I can uh see what? Yeah, if we are clear of danger. Or if I can hear yeah, anything. Absolutely. I absolutely, keep yeah. forgetting I asked for it. I asked for permission. It's like asking to go to the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> well, it's, 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 good it's good practice to ask. Rather yeah, than just, so just rolling roll. dice. Um, yeah, I, you then just got to remember to do it when I say yes. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, I got an eight. <laughs> the main clue that you had was the, the, the large pool of blood over on uh, 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 from his left hand. Uh, and that the fact that you'd kind of notice that that was already wrapping around uh, the corner of the shack that you've yeah. seen. So with with an eight, you basically haven't picked up anything new, but you've at least reminded yourself of what's going on. And your sort of knowledge, if anything, your natural knowledge around sort of water areas, like you can see this is a self-contained, almost manu like an artificial lake. So you're not concerned of anything actually being in those waters. Yeah, that would uh, be particular just with your knowledge uh, of gotcha. water ones. Other other ones in the group might not have known that, uh, but you've uh, a bit more of a specialty mm -hmm. around water. I got a five on investigation. Cool. You've uh, kind of come around the corner and you went, "Holy shit! There's a goblin." <laughs> <laughs> you, know, yeah. Are you guys seeing this? <laughs> you know? Tell he's dead. I know. Yeah, is is he dead? Maybe we should try something else. Till you know, tell don't. Like this guy's died twice already. Jeez. <laughs> Just let him be. Faking it. <laughs> he hasn't crossed over. Well, well, Damn well, it, we're not going to let him. <laughs> I'm going to use spirit and capture. I'm not going to let him cross it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're observing the surroundings. Claude's going to investigate the body. Cool. Mm. Um, I guess to see if there's anything besides like the obvious, like the blood loss from you said his arm is yeah. missing. Yeah, well, uh, your hand is basically his hand. Hand, okay. Yeah, so just below the wrist, as in closer towards the elbow. Uh, investigation check is that rolled a twelve. Well, uh, anything you picked up, obviously, you know, it it looks like a very sharp cut. A sharp but not clean cut at the point, um, but also under the fur because it's you checking it out, you recognize what that symbol is again. That's underneath that little bit of fluff from what you now know to be the remainder of his costume that he had earlier on, um, and it is that Seven Suns logo that you in particular would recognize and remember. This is the same tattoo we found on the uh, on the other on the ones in the basement under yeah. the tavern. Yeah. Just informing the informing the group. Yeah. It looks like 
Can I assume that the cut looks like it was by a blade, not by like an animal that just ripped it off or something? Doesn't look like it's a blade. The fact that it's not clean. Okay. Yeah. He's, I don't. I, can't go, I, 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 I don't know your sort of experience with animals, so I'm not <laughs> quite sure what you'd uh, really be able to sort of identify. Uh, but it's still nothing quite like you've seen before. Okay. Can I go find the door now? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. Where's the, what's, who's who? Shack is this? Why is he here? There's so many unanswered questions, guys. Tommy, Tommy doesn't care too much about him. Uh, like almost good, almost a good riddance because they started the fight first, so we finished it. Well, we didn't quite finish it, but. I don't I don't I don't care too much about this guy. Who finished it? Who finished the fight for us? Don't know, don't care. I think only one person got away, one creature got away from that fight, so I'm guessing this is Yep. Yep. But something else finished him. I we didn't we didn't do this. No. I don't think. It, and yeah, and th and this is and this is <clears throat> Because this guy basically, from what you remember, because in your world it's only a couple of days ago, mm -hmm. um, so you remember he got away. He didn't have a lot of damage with him, and the main thing is he got away. He jumped into the sewer and then ran off. And the fact that the sewer went off in two different directions is the reason you guys yep. didn't follow because you had no idea where he actually went. I believe it was Bodak who looked down there. Was it or Tommy? I did. Yeah, it was Bodak. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, you just didn't. You, you couldn't tell which direction he went. He had jumped down, and by the time he got there. There was no even sort of echoes and signs to sort of follow up with. So that's about yeah. two, three days ago in your time. I so that's why you would remember those sorts of details. Um, and you certainly remember that you guys didn't, you know, cut his hand. So. So, Claude, you told us about the Suns. Do we know? So who are the Suns? They're, they're a merchant group. They're one of the biggest in, in this region. Um, they're... What kind of background would I have on them? Do I know kind of like their business practices? They're infamous for certain things. Yeah, your you, but your your knowledge is both um, intimate and and definitely personal, mm -hmm. uh, because they're basically without saying too much, they're basically your main rivals. Yeah, as a as a, as a merchant company, uh, from what from what you knew, um, it was two merchant companies rivaling each other. Um, so the fact that the instances that you've seen them in so far kind of maybe don't quite align with what you would have thought about them. Yeah. This is, I don't know about any underhanded tactics, but obviously the, the two that were, the, the group that was attacking the tavern was up to no good. Yeah. What you would though, what you, what you would though have is almost a sense of pride because your merchant group, which I don't think you've actually said the name, so that's why I'm not saying it. Um, your merchant group uh, was definitely in first place. And these guys were feisty second place, just always trying to pip you guys, but never really quite had the oomph or firepower or resources to really, to really truly compete with you guys. I don't think I named the merchant group. I'm going to have to think on that. Okay. Oh, you did. It's, it's, it's your surname. It's, it? it's not that good. It's, it's the double M. The Marcel Merchantile. Marcel Merchantile. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm literally going through my notes right now. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. So that's where you recognize that at the moment. That's something I'll share with the group. Like, uh, they, yep. I'll, I'll, I'll share my background as a merchant guard and... Marcel Merchantry. They were our, they were a rival group, but I don't know anything about what they'd be doing here. So good rinse then, huh? Yeah, they mess with you. We mess with them. Oh, such a cool, such a cool it, line. It, but so why would they this. come for you? Is there anything you know, or you're protect? You were protecting. That's the thing. It doesn't seem targeted. We ran into them in the tavern by happenstance, as far as I can tell. I don't think it was a personal attack yeah. but there's some some sort of pattern here so are we heading into this um, in the picture here is this town <laughs> yeah. a town that you yeah, guys were trying I'm, to I'm come up the, the name shack. of i check the shack huh? i've been trying to find the door for hours now <laughs> <laughs> the, the goblin's basically sitting with his back to the door 
so he's got his back to the door. He's leaned up against the door, and Tobin is lying across his lap with his head on his lap. Can I do a sleight of hand check to pull, or I guess, yeah, sleight of hand check to pull Tobin up gently off of the yeah, goblin? So sleight of hand is probably more to do with you're trying to do something secretively. Uh, oh, okay, I think Tobin then. will realize if you're trying to move him. Uh, there's there's a list on that, so probably animal handling. Is yeah, that makes more sense. But oh, nat twenty, baby! Woo! Hey, you nat twenty. How do you how do you convince? Because that would have been quite a tough rule. How do you convince a clearly distraught pup? Well, you dog? said he was laying there, just like pretty much like quiet yeah. and just like solemn. <clears throat> you know what? I'm gonna pick them both up. I'm gonna pick up because the goblin. He's on top of, or yeah, he's laying on top of the goblin. They're both relatively small. I feel like that I can handle both of them, and I'm gonna gently just like two-handedly get underneath. Well, one-handed under the goblin's uh, little legs, and then caress, hold his, hold his, you know, yeah. head up, yeah, cradle him, and just yeah, like cradle yeah, him. cradle yeah. him, and just like pull both of them up, and like make eye contact with Tobin, this little boy. Because I know he's gonna he's gonna feel it feel the startling, but I'm gonna give him a little like a uh, reassuring look, you know that that so I'm here he, with him. He, he had that slight at the, at the very start. He had that slight bit of a growl, like a protective growl, but he did look up at you, and just the big eyes are just looking up at you, and they're just they're just sad now. Like yeah, he's just he, he almost kind of senses the comfort that comes from you uh, yeah. with that, and, and you pick them up both, both up very gently and very swiftly. Um, that you've been able to set them off to the side. Yeah. Yeah. So now the door is unobstructed. <laughs> Sorry, I keep. I shouldn't mute myself. Well, then I'm going to set them to the side and open the door. Cool. Uh, first thing right. you notice. First thing you notice. The door handle is human height. Wouldn't have it any other way. Yep. Nope. Rock in, very small shack. Uh, the shelves, there's 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 a little counter. Uh, there's some fishing lines. There's a few different wee hooks. There's random shelves of some bait there. Uh, B A I T. Just before the Northern Irish accent gets in there, goes he bait them. Um, but uh, you know, so uh, just worms and flies and the sorts. Before a few chairs. Uh, before I step in, I knock and like say hello. Anybody in here? Yeah. Uh, nothing. You look nothing. at the counter. Uh, you look at the counter. There's no response. You can see everything in this room. As you can see, it's a very small shack, so you can pretty much see very clearly where things are. Um, there's a mixture, as I said, of some newer fishing rods. There's some, you know, lightly dusty fishing rods. There's some older fishing rods. There's a range of equipment there, uh, but you can't see anything is else there, that's is, in this. Is there signs of like recent activity in here? I guess I should do a perception check, huh? Well, well you can you can look around, and from yeah. what you can see, there's there's a little bit of dust. You know, there there is some dust. There's there's some activity. Uh, probably not recently cleaned, but not necessarily decrepit and to the point of, you know, it's an ancient fishing shack. Yeah, is you know? this somewhat somebody's like personal property, or is this like a, a store? Probably, you probably think it's closer to a store, a oh. store slash meeting club. Meeting. Club. It doesn't look it doesn't doesn't look that professional. It's a it's a fishing club. Fishing you know, there's club. fishing club. There's a pier. There's an artificial lake. You've heard of these things before. You're probably doubting some of those stories you heard before in the past of the size of the fish that the mm -hmm. guys got in this, as all fishing stories are. To be doubted, uh, you kind of want to like really. It's just, don't really think there's any monsters in here. Not in this uh, pond. Of, 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 in this pond. So you know, to everyone else, it's a pretty decent sized batch of water. You would describe it as a, <laughs> with your comparison. You know, all, right, all you so can see is that the at the corner of the water just goes towards the corner of the building. Uh, just sort of open land area. These are some main roads that you can see. There's a main road on the other side of the lake. 
the nicely aligns with it. You know, this isn't a, as we said, it's not a natural lake, so it perfectly aligns with the edge of the road. You're not having to draw, you know, build a road around a natural lake. Uh, you have these main roads, uh, basically all pretty well developed, all going in towards this town area. I'm going to take Claude, a fishing rod. Claude, it's, it's, it, it begins with F, it ends in Y, it's kind of, it feels like it's, it's just, <laughs> oh my god, you know. Emily, faulty. Far Cry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cool name. Fish. Fish. Fishy. Um, so what I'm thinking fish, is... Fishy is a great one. Fish. Wasn't it supposed to be an emotion? <laughs> sort of? Yeah. It was an adjective. Oh yeah, you did say it was an emotion. So you well fiery. Remember this is th remember this is what he's fiery. trying to remember. So we'll we'll see what it actually is. Oh, okay. You know. Uh, so what I'm thinking in order to get into this place, could we maybe take a boat and pretend like we're part of the fishing club? You I mean, do you think we'd struggle to get in? Would they not just oh, allow I mean, travelers? You know, I just want to go knock on a door and say. I mean, <laughs> you and doors today. Every I mean, door I, think, I find. I don't think we have to deceive our way in. No, Were good. there any clues inside the shop? Shack? It's just a fish. I mean, it's just a fishing shop. Shack. Maybe. Nothing, uh, no more, no less. Maybe let's go in town and ask more about this possible fishing club and see if there's more people that were dressed like this goblin. Maybe. Maybe uh, more of. Uh, Claude's competitive or other trading group might be around this area. We should no, the least... best place for gossip is a tavern. Oh, we should now you're talking. Guard know. <laughs> <laughs> let the guards know there's a body out here. We just gotta make sure they didn't think we did this. Mm. Mm. I definitely didn't touch that body. Uh, before we walk away, though, um... <laughs> <laughs> I got blood all over me. <laughs> Yeah, you you're literally <laughs> holding oh, the body. <laughs> you might want to change shirts or something. Rinse off in the lake. Yeah, you, you've also got some dog hair on you as well. You know, so. Oh, no. uh, it's all right. Walk talk. Sorry. No, I was just saying I can talk my way out of it. Wouldn't be the first time I talk my way out of murder. Well, if the doorknob was at human height. You'd assume it's a human village, and it seems like from the village we came from, or the city we came from, that goblins are not generally liked by humans, so I don't think we're going to have an issue here that we eliminated a goblin. We didn't eliminate <laughs> uh, well, If anything, you guys really, <laughs> really, really tried to keep him alive. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we technically, technically second murdered him, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we get in the fine hair... <laughs> He got what he deserved. Yeah, exactly. No, that's not true. No, I feel that way. Before we head to the town, uh, I go over to the body, um, kneel, kneel beside it. He, you see Claude, like, put a hand over his chest. It's like a like a, a, mo uh, a religious gesture and say a quick prayer to, to Helm, you know, for respect before he checks the... I assume the goblin had some pockets or something. Yeah, it was pr pretty pretty bare. It was just kind of simple leathers, okay. um, the remnants of that old um, incredible costume. Okay, um, it just, you know, he's still going to do a check to make sure there's no like like notes. Nothing. He had no indicator of what he was doing. Yeah, yeah, there is actually in in one of the in one of the pockets because there's not a lot in there. So when you a uh, very slight feel uh, that gesture, by the way, it was enough to kind of make Tobin look over. He looked at your hand, he gave it a little lick, and then went back to kind of lying down. Um, there's a coin in his pocket. Um, has coins on them at the moment in terms of um, we're sort of looking at at the moment in terms of finances. Does it have the seven sun symbol as well? Looks Just... like your normal gold coin. Standard gold coin. Has okay. anybody checked Tobin's saddle? Because we didn't get close enough to him at the beginning. No. Can I check Tobin, Tobin's saddle? Want to do an animal handling check? Sure. 
Not one I... punches the dog. <laughs> the dog hurt the turtle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's a bit awkward, but basically, it, if anything, Tobin's, Tobin actually kind of shimmies a little bit away from you just because it's still uncertain the moment. But in moving, you can hear a little bit of shake, a little bit of kind of metallic sound, sort of slightly clanging against each other as he moves. There's something in here, y'all. I don't know. Can I reach into... Why don't you use magic to get it? Add all bags. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, so basically basically you reach in. Tobin's more distracted than anything at the moment. If you were to reach in, uh, you basically pick out about three more of these coins, uh, very similar to the one that um, Claude has at the moment. Um, Claude and Rain, can I ask you do both to do investigation checks? Damn, six. I've... Your what? rolls are terrible. Today. Six. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get over a ten today. I don't know. What'd you get, Claude? Five. Cool. <laughs> right. So you guys have four coins on you at the moment that came from the the goblin and Tobin. I just uh, turned to the group with the coins in my hand because just to show that that's what I found in here. Yeah. Uh, uh, if we're heading to the actually, tavern, sorry, Claude's going to put the Claude's going to put the coin back in the body out of respect because he feels it would be disrespectful to take the. He's not judging anybody. He just puts it back where he found it. I mean, let's not be hasty. Yep. I mean, He's not using it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can do what you want. I'm not taking that. Yeah, uh, Claude's more concerned about the way his yeah. god would view him if he were stealing money off bodies. You seeing these coins at the moment, looking at what Rayan's doing at the moment? Could you do an investigation check for me with advantage, please, due to your particular fondness of coin? Who's that, Rian? Uh, no, Tommy. I think Tommy. Tommy. Oh, Tommy. I'm just holding the coins. Six. That was with advantage. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, there are three coins in front of you, and Claude has put one of them back on to the goblin. <laughs> a two and a seven. I have a minus one to investigation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> cool. Hmm. All right. What do you guys want to do now? Definitely was four coins. I'm going to take some fishing equipment. I don't think I'm gonna take some and try to find out who owns this place. I don't know. Tell me what you take. Uh, I'm gonna take a couple baubles, um, a fishing <laughs> rod, and uh, are you gonna take the shiny new one, the middle and age one, or the pretty basic model? <clears throat> uh, I don't think I can get. Oh, you know what? In case I run into whoever it is, I'm gonna take the basic model. Yes, like model. Okay, cool. This is classic. Because I don't want to be stealing, but I also want to afford it. I know I can afford it. I just yeah. So, uh, busy Bulldog comes out of the shack. He's like, right, it looks like a fishing club. Uh, got myself a new fishing rod. Uh, didn't want to be too fancy, so I just took a basic one. You know. I've... Fishing's not really the biggest hobby of mine. I don't think I need to go overkill in terms of the equipment. Um, and some baubles, as he said. And uh, <laughs> cool. Are we heading in to town? Maybe. I think that's the next logical step. We should go right. find out more about this group. And see if there's more of similar dressed folks around. Yeah, let's go uh, around. The... Or have been around. Cool. So we basically have three main roads leading into the town area, one at the other end of the pond, uh, one directly in the middle, which was in line with the tall grass, one going off to the southwest. Uh, and that's what you can see from the moment from your perspective of about here. Where do you want to go? Uh, probably, uh, I w- Claude looks towards the center path, the most direct, it's closest. It's not having to go around the lake to get to that other entrance and just... I agree. Yeah, I was going to ask, can we see what's up these paths? Can we look ahead a little bit? Yeah, so at the moment, I'm just, I'm just obviously, while you guys can see the map, I'm telling you what your characters can see from this 
perspective. So which direction do you want to look? So imagine, so I'll give you a little bit of space. Imagine you came out past the shack. Which way do you want to look? North, south, east, west? All right, Logan would like to look down the south, southwest pass, uh, path and see what he can, what he can find. Uh, down there, yeah. Nice, well-established, well-maintained road. You can see evidence of good footfall traffic. A, a lot of the roads, even as you go along here, they're well, well used. A little bit dusty, but you can tell that they're well used and relatively well maintained. Uh, you can see evidence of sort of you know horse tracks, trolleys, carts, footfall. Yeah. Nothing, anything that goes along the line of like fresh mud or anything like that that says in the immediate time frame that you've been here, this has been used. But uh, well-maintained roads as you're going along. Uh, you do see as you're coming along, kind of looking off in that direction, you can't see anything in particular because that road just continues on in that way. If anything, that's probably going back towards the direction of Summerthorpe. Okay. So if anything, that would be in that direction because you. basically you started from right about here, you came down here, uh, you know, towards Danu in the forest and Mag Magfil Marsh. That was sort of a little bit sort of southeast of where you guys were, east southeast, and then you travel up north. So right. if anything, thank you. For help me get my bearings there. Yes, exactly. So if anything, that's Summer Thorn. This is where you guys have come from. Uh, you don't, not that I know of, know anything of here, um, Claude. You, based on the little bit of travel that you've done, uh, there's a town up in this direction called Daggerford that you know very well. But you know it's in that general direction. You know it very well. Just based on placement of landmarks and things like that there, it's a decent bit away. Not weeks or anything like I'm talking about with the, the volcano or anything, but it's in that general direction. All right, team. Um... So I can go talk to the town guard if you all want to gather information at the at the tavern. What do you think? I'm yeah, gonna we get... cast minor illusion real quick and do an illusion of the goblin, and so that Tobin will come with us. Wow. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> otherwise, Tobin wasn't going to come. You should <laughs> tell if this is twisted or not. <laughs> you gotta let this goblin go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. You're casting. So you're cast yeah, you're casting minor illusion, and there's an image of your best sort of recollection of this goblin. Um, there is a there is a left hand there, because at least you've seen his right hand, and you're just trying to replicate that in the same spot. Okay, uh, if I'm correct, that's a concentration. Would that be right? No, it's a cantrip. Sorry, uh, it's a it's a description within that. So yes, it is a cantrip. Do you have to concentrate to maintain that? On the right hand. I'll, che I'll check that. It, I'll check that. It's not, it's, it's not the most important, but it generally will say uh, maybe concentration in the start of it. Uh, so are we going to have a dog companion for the rest of the game now? I don't understand. I, I'm not sure how this dog's <laughs> going to be able to tell. There's going to be two. How are we going to hide the body? Okay. No, you don't have to. You don't have to concentrate, but it is one minute. Yeah, that's, that's we're just getting the dog away and get what? going. And... We did not do oh. this. We do not have to hide the body. <laughs> like I feel like I feel like us trying to be more innocent. We're getting more deeper into like. <laughs> I just want the dog. Yeah, cool. So the goblin appears beside you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you can tell Tobin's certainly confused. Uh, if anything, you kind of get a bit of a, a, an impression that Dog is waiting for a command, and it's probably waiting for a command in a similar voice to its owner. So, what do you think the best impression of a goblin trying to get Tobin to come along would sound like, Rian? Squeak, come Tobin, squeak. Yep. Definitely perks the ears up. Um, do either a performance check for me or an animal handling, whichever one is your higher one. Uh, yeah, performance is two plus two, so yeah, fourteen, a uh, sixteen. Oh, excellent, cool. Tobin's kind of confused right now, but if anything, he's probably he's del he's deliriously happy. Oh my god, he's trying to jump on this thing. It doesn't really hold his weight. If anything, it kind of almost slightly goes 
he get, kind of goes through it. Yeah. But he's a dog. He doesn't really care. Looks like his owner. Sounds like his owner. He's ready to rock and roll. I mean, you got any more of that he- meat? Maybe just a little... <laughs> A little extra of <laughs> little reward for him coming along. <laughs> that was gonna be my my way if we had to get Toby the Cub. So, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, his little extra jerky. Yeah. But <laughs> we brought back a a dead handler for <laughs> a minute that I'm worried about the consequences after. So I'll distract him with cool. some food. Like here, okay. Come on, Toby. So probably probably what you might want to do with that minute is maybe get inside the city walls or the village walls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just quit. so that Tobin doesn't have a really hard decision to make. Hey, quit so. railroading us. We want him to disappear right now. <laughs> yeah, <time>. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. I want the hundred percent. I want cool. a five minute so dog you, dialogue. You're taking your sweet time. <laughs> the the minute is clicking down. Uh, what do you want to do? Headed to town. All right. Yeah, let's. I'm Main Street. I'm going to follow them. Oh, uh, Bodoc, you sure you don't want to go every other direction? You know, since I'm railroading you. You don't want to go side. <laughs> you don't want to go left. Uh, you want to take your time. Do you maybe want to do some circles? Maybe do an no. entire scope of the whole village. You're right. Do you want to go for a swim in the lake? You can do whatever you want. Okay, I'm gonna go fishing. Fishing, cool. You got your new fishing rods. Okay, you're there. You ready to rock and roll? Do what you I'm like. I'm just gonna hang out here. I'm gonna go fishing. You all go inside. No, I'm gonna go. In. I'm gonna go into. The... <laughs> yeah, cool. I'm gonna As save you that be... for later. Uh, did I say? Did you guys say you wanted to go towards the middle gate? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Closest one. As as you come along, you're coming towards a sign for the town. A sign that has the name of the town on it. Flattery. Town of Flattery. Flattery. Because flattery gets you everywhere. The flattery. hub town of this every of this area. I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. There's lots lots of roads leading in and out of the town of Flattery. Uh, lots of places you can get to from there. So you've got the town of Flattery and um, perfect spoke wheel on that there, which also aligns with our map. As you go in, you come to the front gate and the door is open. So it's it's basically a, it's basically a walled off village. It's not like a massive fortress or town. It's just a walled off village that you have. And there basically are some wooden doors and they're already open. Uh, as you can see when you go in there, uh, I'm going to zoom out a tiny bit. You've got a lovely green manicured lawn area to either side of you walk and you've got plenty of trees as you go along. The, the ground is a little bit uneven in some patches. Um, there's some bits that, you know, maybe a little bit of activity, a little bit of digging. Has, has been happening, but it's all relatively flat and been well maintained and making its way towards a sort of a large relative uh, evident town square. You can see a large building on your left. Uh, you can see some buildings in the distance and there's a small stone building uh, off to the back there. I just now realized what this map was. My bad. I- it makes sense now. <laughs> it does. It was the drawings of a madman. <laughs> what's cool is like if you zoom way in, it's like Google Maps, and you get like Street View, and <laughs> but this whole time we just don't I have time for that right now. All these things up top were. I, I, I'm. 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 Turns out they're buildings. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we came in from the top. I thought we ran through the tall oh, grass. Oh, that's why you were asking about the shack. Yeah, because uh, I thought I had this totally flipped in my head. Okay, got it. It all it comes together. Now. Okay. All right. Um, Claude. Claude looks for a, a town guard on the way. Just anybody who looks relatively authoritative. Yeah. Yeah. As as they seek out the tavern. Cool. Uh, the closest thing that looks like a tavern is over to your left hand side here. Um, this area is not particularly large. As I said, it's a village. It's centered around sort of a folk, uh, a central point. You can see most of the buildings. You can see kind of lots of signs for things, for for buildings uh, as you go along. If you want to know any of them, just ask away. Ask any questions as you see. This is a flat paved out intentional almost kind of village square 
in that case, is there anything... and then there's a structure here. Is there anything that looks like a, a village, like elder leader, like a some leader's yeah, house? Yeah. See, as you, as you look around, you've got this incredibly clean area. Like the grass is beautiful. The trees almost look like they've been clipped. Isn't a speck of dust anywhere. But you can't really see any people. Hmm. That is odd. Anybody notice a distinct lack of villagers? Yeah, it's midday. Isn't it still midday? I mean, I mean we spent a long time yep. traveling, we, but... Probably by 4 o'clock. All right. Because you, you, you were just after midday when you left. As I said, it only took about half a day <laughs> to sort of get, you know, half of a working day. Yeah. That makes sense. That's definitely dinner tavern time, and Tommy walks straight for the for the tavern door. Yeah, and, let's and, take and a opens it. There, see if okay, cool. Uh, the tavern name that appears as you go along, you can see as you see a town square. There's a a built up wooden stage here. There's two very very similar buildings, round buildings up at the top. Longer, more kind of warehouse building at the side, and just some structures as you go along. The name of this building, as you can see, is called the Pristine Guillotine. Rolls off like the top. Pristine Guillotine. Possibly one of my favorite names that I've ever made up for a, <laughs> for a building. I like that rhyme. Yeah. yeah. Tommy just straight walks right in. Cool. I'm going in with Tobin, too. Cool. So Tobin is trotting along <laughs> beside, beside Rian. Um, there's, as you're about to go in, at the side, you can see <laughs> small cat at the corner of the building. Don't show her more cute. Tobin sees the cat. You have a split second to react. Your split second is gone. Tobin, <laughs> <Yeah>. is, <laughs> Tobin has bolted after the cat. <laughs> Get him, Tobin. Get him. Great. Just you can just hear ruff, 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 um, and off to the cat, and you can kind of see they kind of go around the building. Know where they've gone at the moment? Yeah, I think. Just let him have some fun. He just run it out. Yeah. He just lost someone important. Let him have some fun. Great. We just had that dog. Just got that dog. He's still there. He's still in the walls of the town. Everybody going after. That's true. Now, Tom, uh, so Tommy got, still. Right. Tommy makes his way for the tavern. Tommy still uh, is going Rian. straight in the tavern. Yeah, yeah. straight into the tavern. Um, and uh, Rian, Rian, I know I gave you a split second the last time. Maybe that was too much to give you, put you on the spot. But sometimes there's time sensitive elements. <laughs> now, what would you like to do? Uh, we're just entering the tavern. Is there anybody here? Okay, um, Claude, Bodak, uh, Tell, and Logan. What do you want to do? What sort of general direction? Are you also going to the tavern? Are you investigating a few other buildings, any other areas of the town? What are you thinking? I'm going to go to the town square and just like get a, a feel of what's going on. Like, okay. if, uh, there's nobody around, right? Like, we can I. Can I do a perception check to see if there's like anybody? We don't even need to do that. You just it's it's, it's barren. Pleasantly silent. Pleasantly like, silent. Yeah. yeah, like 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 you don't even like you're not even getting like ship. Maybe you are, but I I wouldn't necessarily think it's almost just like a lovely shiny day and there's no chills. There's no ghoulishness that you can see everywhere you go is. Immaculately clean. I'm gonna stay right behind. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna go with them to the tavern. I get this feeling. That... <laughs> just in case I railroaded you there. No, yeah. I just don't want to no. go. Like I'm getting the oh eerily you know, pleasant Bodox, feeling. Bodox get like the passive aggressive, but said with love. Railroading comment. It's like, oh, you dared accuse a DM of being <laughs> railroaded. Do you want to see all the shit I come up with so that you're not railroaded? <laughs> <laughs> just, so, just, yeah, like, I just thought maybe that'd off. be like a meeting place for people, but if there's literally nobody around and we get this 
pleasant quietness. Like it just I don't know. This doesn't feel like a town. Cool. Um cool. But you were making your way towards the town square and you can decide in a second whether you sort of turn around to go. As you were making your way towards the town square, uh, you see this large wooden structure that you have up here. And there's yeah. steps either side of that. And uh, at the top of those steps is a beautifully pristine guillotine. Mm. Tavern name makes more sense. Sure does. Oh, this oh. thing is shining. The sunlight catches the edge of the blade. Um, it's 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 on a height. It's almost got a glorious sort of feel to it like it's real spectacle of of flattery so you're using pristine in the adjective form that it is clean there's no blood on it exactly okay from what you can see on the ground so remember you're just at the bottom there so you're kind of seeing it from a distance you're not seeing anything else that's around here i'm gonna go up to the guillotine if i see that i'm going up to the guillotine okay Real quick. You're going to rock your way up to that there. Anybody want to join Bodak before I go to uh, the tavern? Claude's uh, going to head towards the village elder or whatever leader, that clean house. It, no unless one... it's the same house. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm so okay. confused. That's fine. So, yeah, this town's totally deserted, right? I had, It's pristine, man. It's clean. Oh. It's eerily quiet. It's. I'm sorry. It's pleasantly quiet. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Logan doesn't buy the whole pleasantly quiet thing. Yeah, this uh, this seems right. too quiet. So Logan's gonna find the tallest structure and get on top of it. And it's coming. Uh, yeah, that's what Logan does. He gets up high and he scouts. Yeah, you know what's cool. pretty tall? The top of the guillotine. <laughs> the top of the guillotine. All right, I guess I'm going to the guillotine if that's the tallest structure around. So me and Logan are going to the guillotine. You're you're going to the guillotine. Um, and I'm, trying like to, I'm trying to pronounce that way because I, I I know we would say guillotine, but you know. Oh I'm yeah, going, guillotine, I'm, guillotine. I'm I'm going for my audience here, um. So that's fine. Okay, uh, and then we'll we'll check in with with Tell once once he's back, which is fine. Okay, cool. Um, Claude, basically, you see Bodoc and uh, Logan making their way towards the guillotine. Yeah, you're kind of just standing out in the middle. I'll come back to you in one second. And Rian and uh, Tommy entering the pristine guillotine uh, tavern. Okay. As you enter. Is there someone there? Got, I'm going to take off this map for the moment. Don't worry no. too much about the exact detail of this. I know it's a little bit dark, but it's kind of just more to give an idea of the sort of the town square type area for that. Uh, but there's a different picture that I'm looking for. Did you do that in MS Paint? Mm. Yes, and you saw how well the goblin turned out <laughs> on my other map. Uh, this, Honestly, this the goblin I... was very well done. I've Thank you very much. Uh, much better than the map. Map was the first. You're better with character. Characters than cartography. I'm better hoping one of these AI. days Logan getting up high is going to pay off. Are you I a railroad in his art style? See something. No. I think it did. Critiquing it. Stick to your, <laughs> stick to your goblins. Logan, that height advantage uh, came key in one of the early fights we did. One of the first fights. Yeah. But then the that's, first that's fight. character. That's character consistency. So. Don't be, don't be ashamed of that at all. Uh, I'm going to no, briefly I... turn this off. I'm going to open it up again. So give me one second. Sorry, stream. It's okay. The next time you want to be up high, I have levitate. I can put you 20 <gasps> feet in the air. That's a good idea. Raise me up <laughs> so I can see a guillotine. Dude, that guy, I can just, I'm picturing an epic moment there, like where you lift me up and I just start shooting arrows down. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see this. Zoom in these a little bit. So, overhead map. 
Oh, sorry, it's me. It's not sharing my screen. That's I was wondering why the, why the thing was off. Oh. Can you see that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. So very brief overview of the pristine guillotine uh, layout. You guys are coming in from the bottom here, uh, looking out towards the bar. You've got the main bar area. You've got seating areas. You got small bedrooms, just like for like in. You know, not not a high volume uh, in or tavern. And but as you walk in, you see this large structure. And let's imagine that's this brown circle in the middle here. Actually, this half circle here. Big circular extra bar area, massive decorative barrels um, on this. Uh, Tommy, you don't recognize any of the logos on the barrels as, as before. These are massive barrels, they're human sized barrels. Uh, in terms of height, very, very wide, stacked up on top of the bar. And you can see some candles, and the candles are being melted to different levels. Uh, there's maybe one or two of them flickering, but even then, those candles are very, very low down on the wick. And as you walk in, you hear an individual go, oh, Potential guests, I see. Oh, come on in. Come on in. we have It's been a while since we've had some visitors. Uh, Who are you? Where are you? Show yourself. To your right-hand side. You're you in their in. building and demanding that they show themselves. Well, it looks <laughs> apparently otherwise empty, and I am freaked out by this town. <laughs> Yeah, a sharp, uh, a sharp dressed man. Yeah. Um. Hi. Is is good. Good evening. Good afternoon. You know, lady and gentlemen. Thank you for entering the establishment. Welcome to the pristine guillotine. Uh, can I get you drinks? Can I get you food? What can we get you sorted for today? We'd like to take a seat. <laughs> yeah, we oh, we're we. we can take a, a drink and be polite, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. We have possibly some other party members. Um, so could we have a big enough table for six? <laughs> oh, then I recommend you take that central seating over towards our main, our main bar area. I will join you very, very quickly. Just underneath, there's plenty of stools in wrapped around. Very warm environment. Just oh, excellent location for socializing. Uh, you also notice that he looks down... And there's like a tiny bit of dust on the on the on the bar, and he whips it, and he almost aggressively cleans it, <laughs> and like like that, and wow, he goes, Whew, sorry about that, sorry about that. This place can get into such a state sometimes. Um, we just like, can't get you drinks, can't get you anything you like. We just want you to be our be our guest. Can I do an investigation check to see if there's literally anyone else sitting around in the? what i can yeah. see of the bar is right. it is there multiple well oh here i'll roll for it no no it's it's relatively flat maybe at best sort of maybe steps up to sort of wee tables and things it's as you can see it's relatively maybe obviously with this picture maybe forget like the second level but these one these this sort of level it's just stairs you can see everything there's nothing really particularly hidden it's a nice open area you can see right the way to the back so i didn't need <laughs> A zero? <laughs> yeah. 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 I rolled a nat one and I have a minus yeah, one. You too. have a minus one. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Your tell focus me, is what, on the beer. Tell yeah. me, what is the least helpful bit of information that you acquired about this bar? What type of wood is on the floor? Oh, it's it's absolutely beautiful pine. Pine, pine's nice. I've been on ships down the sea. Soft. Yeah, you, pine's always yeah, nice you know, you know, you know, you know, wood. You know, it's like it's, it's like you you wouldn't be making a boat I've, out of it. <laughs> We're here to drink. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, could could we get a dog bowl too? We we have a dog running around. There was, there was a cat. He went wild, but he'll he'll be back. I I know he'll get yes, actually, snackish yes. later. 
Yes, uh, I, I, I maybe don't have a dog bowl size, but I do have a cat bowl size. So I'll fill that with water and maybe maybe, maybe they can share mm-hmm. that. So I'll, uh, I'll go out to the back and get the dog bowl or get the cat bowl. One second. Thank you. I'll be back, I'll be back with the drinks. I'm going to go sit at the bar. Yeah, I sit right, I sit right beside you. And... Yeah, it just, uh, it, it, are you getting weird vibes? No. <laughs> no. There's no one else here. There's I get no it. I get it. Here's here's your blood. Here's your bloody cat bowl. Uh, right. Oh. You know, just take the drinks. Pff, sit down. You said you guys. You you guys had more. There were more years coming. Well, are they here? As you, as you might. There's a pretty, pretty popular. You know, set of chairs here. That's the only reason I, I gave it to you. You said there was more of you coming. Uh, he just throws the the cat bowl with water on the ground. By the way, if your dog does anything to my cat, I'm not. Oh, who, who, uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh no, mm, no, no. That's nope. a nice guillotine you got outside. It is. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, it it um, hasn't had to be used for a long time. Um, you know, and once again, looks down on the ground, sees a little bit of the of the water stain from it just chucking the water bowl down, and throws the thing on the ground, and aggressively, you know, with the foot, just soaks up all the extra water that's on the ground, uh, and just goes, right, is there anything else? Uh, Do you have food? How about this? I got, yeah, I got food. I got food. Wait your damn I business. don't know, Tommy, heart. if um, we're yeah. imposing at this point. No, 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 no. It's still a business. Still a business. It just you guys just come in. I don't know where. Nothing planned. That's fine. No reservation. That's okay. How about how about this? Right? How about just when your friends get here, you just you just give me a little ring. How about that? I I I don't have time to sit here and and uh, and, and do everything. Going do you on have here. other people to take care of? Or even get a chance to just rush it straight to the back. All right. Thanks then. I mean, this beer is pretty good though. <laughs> Did he even bring the drinks? I just saw that dog bowl. Yeah, he threw the drinks yeah. down to yeah. us and threw yeah, the dog drinks. bowl as you got well. Drinks. They were kind of roughly thrown down the ground, yeah. Oh. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to come back to you guys in a second. Uh, Bodak, Claude, and Logan. You guys are in the town square. Logan, uh, athletics check, please, to climb on top of the guillotine. Thank you. <laughs> athletics. 19. Teen, lovely, cool. You uh, uh, have found yourself. I'm not sure why the picture is so small at the moment. Uh, I'll zoom in. You are perfectly crouched up on top of this uh, guillotine. Hopefully, it has good vantage. It has excellent vantage points because you can see the signage of all the buildings in this town area. Yeah, wonderful. You can see. You can see different establishments. You can't tell what they are from the outside, but you can see the, see the signs. Yeah. You can see the pristine guillotine over at the tavern. I'm gonna gonna do get the map here. I know how much you loved this map, so I'm gonna ask you to follow it. Yeah, it even did. more. It yeah. It messed with my head. Yeah, so you're here. All right? Where are the wee mice? Is? Okay. Okay. You see. The pristine guillotine. You see a sign. The pristine guillotine. You see. Uh, I'm going to take you off this because you know where you are. I want this zoomed in a little bit more. Pristine guillotine. Pebbles, tidbits. Wiles. And I will spell anything when we get to the end. Just give me one second. We've got. Close contact, and we have the pristine guillotine. Is that the name of a building? The pristine guillotine? There's two pristine guillotines. I thought that was bottom left. Well, oh, you're talking. You're talking to the guys when you say, hey, "Logan, what do you see up there?" Because uh, <laughs> I was going up to the the guillotine with them. Uh, I see Sorry, a actually, lot of actually, actually, when you look at this building, it actually says Trinky Dinks. Okay. <laughs> I was confused <laughs> by two guillotines. Okay. Uh, I see a lot of buildings and not much going on. Huh.
Can I do? Uh, can I do an investigation roll and see if I can see any more detail in any of this? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what you see. Yeah, give me a give me an investigation, Jack, and I'll kind of go into how much detail there is for you. Nineteen. No, oh, never mind. That was the older roll. Six. Yeah. Cool. Probably the main thing you do at the moment. Well, other than initially thinking that that said pristine guillotine on it, and that it actually says <laughs> Trinky Dinks on it. Uh, that's 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 the rule. You can tell that these two buildings are almost the exact same. Pretty much the exact same. They're almost carbon copies of each other's building. Um, Close contact. You can see some windows in it. You can just see clothing in there. It's a warehouse. You know, you briefly see through the window. You see long lines of clothing. Okay. This one also looks like a sort of smaller shop. I mean, Trinky Dinks sounds interesting. I kind of want to see what's going on in Trinky Dinks. (laughs) <laughs> oh, yep. <laughs> Sounds like this a very one, mature this, store. Yeah. And this was the one this was the one you originally thought said pristine guillotine. Oh, yes. So yeah, things. Yeah. yeah. My bad. I, I misread that sign. Oops. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh Logan has his attention's been caught looking at Trinky Dinks. Uh Bodoc, you're up beside the, the guillotine. Uh, Claude, you're sort of in the town square at the moment, and probably, if anything, looking up at these guys, because one of them's standing on top of a, a guillotine. And the other one has decided that although he's confused by the silence, the pleasant silence in this area, uh, about why this why this guillotine's so intriguing. Is it? Well, yeah. So can I uh, do an investigation check on that? Guillotine to see if I can see any. Oh, signs you stick of your use. head in the wee hole. No, uh, no, 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 no. You don't do that. No, no. I don't want to do okay. that. Not yet. Okay. But I. Sure. It is a ten. So is yep. there like any? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, basically, the only thing that you can get from this, um, from this area is that there is underneath. So not so like like I said, the basket. You know, that would be in front of the little hole at the front. It's empty. It's perfectly yeah. clean. Uh, however, on that, you know, probably hidden away, you kind of get the feeling that if, based on how, things, how clean things are, if it had been seen, it's not supposed to be under the basket. Uh, there's there's a garment uh, that has a bit of red on it, a bit of black on it, a bit of yellow on it, and a bit of purple on it. Looks like maybe a... A jacket or a waistcoat. Mm-hmm. It's obviously not completely intact, but you can still see a distinct variation in, in clothing color. That's really all you can kind of see at the moment. Is the guillotine up? Like, is it ready to like chop? It's up at the top. All right. I want to. I want to engage the guillotine. I want to let it. I want to let it fly. We'll see what happens. Yep. Pull the wee string at the back. Just drop straight down. Well, that was anticlimactic. I should have. Claude, do you have anything to put in this? I want to try the sucker out. How many? Uh, let me check my backpack. I don't think I have any food on me. <laughs> like a melon or we something. We got any melons? <laughs> any uh, any head shaped things? <laughs> Besides our heads. <laughs> okay, nothing. You try it with Hold your on, hand. I'll check. There's, oh, there's a goblin nearby if we're not done with him. <laughs> yeah, can we take it? Yeah, wait. <laughs> it's so horrible. Wait, I know where we can find a lifeless corpse. <laughs> it kind of feels a little in poor taste, though. I mean, yeah, maybe oh, we don't carry oh, a corpse. That's where we cross the line. <laughs> All right. I mean, all right, good. All right. Oh, we tried to keep nothing. him alive. Maybe the trick was to actually kill him. <laughs> he was the big bad the whole time. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. So, can, can I pick up that piece of clothing? What is it? So it's it look is it a full jacket? No, oh, but it looks it looks like the back of maybe like a shirt or a waistcoat. It's kind of like a the last piece of something. Uh Well, this was 
not what I expected. So what can I do? Uh, Cla- Claude's gonna. Claude, what would you like to do? <laughs> well, 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 well. That's okay. Sorry, I, I just didn't want to feel like I was putting it in the spot to make up something. You know, give you give you a second to think of anything you want to do. You know. Claire, well, while well, uh, they're inspecting, um, Claude's just gonna walk from building to building. He's gonna. He's a little suspicious. I'm gonna cast divine sense. Just make sure there's nothing yep. hostile. Um, and just peek into the buildings, like just real quickly, make a round. Hello, okay. hello. Cool. Which one do you want to go to first? Uh, let's so start with got, the one closest. Uh, so we've got, sorry, just to give you a description, we've got uh, Kibbles, Tidbits, Close Contact. So Close Contact. Uh, Pinky Dinks. And Worth's Wiles. Uh, worthwhile. Oh, just like, it's, 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 yeah, just spelling worthwhile, but worth is uh, possessive. So worth is. Wiles. If that's the closest one, I'll start there. Okay. You rock, you rock into Worth's Wiles. And as we get. You see an individual behind the counter of the shop. He is extremely pleasant to deal with. He is like, oh, I am delighted to have you here. Um, just come on in. My name is Francis Kittlesworth. And this is my, I could say humble, but <laughs> I'm, I'm not really about my shop. Um, we have many words today. Can I interest you in anything we have? We have ornaments and we have particular jewelry we've got a beautiful new set piece in today i'd love to be able to show you come in come in he walks over beside you almost wants to take his arm around the side of you you know up, up to you how you react to that uh, but you can see he's like come on in check out my wares you know um almost like let's call it pleasantly pushy uh, good day sir um we we just arrived in town. I'm here with some companions, and we we noticed there's not a lot of people around. I'm not I'm not doing any shopping. It's just we were kind of thrown off. Is this oh, well, well, uh, let's just say there's a uh, one truth and one lie in that statement you just made there, sir. Uh, yes, there haven't really been a lot of people today. It's been a relatively slow day, I must say. Uh, but uh, the second the lie is, oh, I think I could get you to do a little bit of shopping today. Yeah, we might uh, we might swing back around. We were. Uh... Uh, he's, I'm trying to decide how doing, much. Doing, doing a seals thing, he just brings you straight over to a beautiful counter, an ornate counter, and he shows you uh, a ring that's in the counter, and it says, "This." I've just brought this in. This is uh, the ring of the mimic. So. This ring, while it doesn't shoot fireballs, it's nothing fancy like that. It, however, does allow you to once a day transform into a ma- magically into an inanimate object that you can see. Allows you to skulk, allows you to potentially hide from invaders. Ooh, could be, you know, very, very useful way to keep yourself alive in a pretty, pretty tricky scenario. I appreciate that. I'm not much of a uh, a skulker, uh, as it were. Yes, uh, yes, I, I, I can see that you you like to face your problems head on. What I don't know why I'm showing you this. It's 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 a cowardly item. Cowardly item. I'm sorry. I hope it didn't offend you. I hope it didn't offend you. So he takes you away. Uh, but that's probably my my best item at the moment. Obviously, we have classics like uh, healing potions. Um, every you know, every visitor today gets a voucher for the tavern. No, uh, you know, so just my way of. <sighs> it was my idea, the voucher system, just because other people use it. But that's it. It's, it's a, you know, <laughs> innovation always brings copycats. Um, and uh, but yeah, you know, uh, take a voucher on me. Uh, get you one free drink for the tavern. Um, but just, so you know, tell your friends. Tell your friends, special items today. What's wilds? <laughs> Clug gets the sense that this guy really needs to just make a deal before he'll give up any information. Um, how, how much for a healing potion? 
Healing potions are looking at, let me guess, that is, I would be, normally I would charge 15, but for you, sir, 12. 12 gold? Cool. It seems a little, seems a little steep. Uh, what do you say, uh, 8 gold? Persuasion check, sorry. A persuasion? Just case, yeah, just in case you didn't hear me. Sixteen. Yeah. And gold. Come Nine. on, meet me in the middle. I'm, I'm, I'm already coming down from 15. I'm already coming down from 15. As you can see, we all got overheads. We all got overheads. You know what? Uh, yeah, I've got I've got a party here. Yeah, I could convince them to come shop. Somebody might be interested in that ring of the mimic. You know, I'll, I'll bring some business in. Right. Nine gold and maybe some future business. Deal. Nine gold. I like that. You, you've, uh, you've got me this day, sir. Um, I, uh, you know, please make sure people come to Worth's Wiles. Um, just make sure I know the buildings are very, very similar. Don't go to Kibble's, uh, you know, Kibble's Worth. Worth's Wiles it is. Steel Wiles it is. Yes. Yes. Uh, Transaction for the nine gold. Uh, it goes behind the counter, brings a nice healing potion for you. Uh, when that's ready, that is a 2d4 plus two when you want to use it. Okay. Um, now that we've made a made a transaction, uh, Claude's hoping that maybe this guy opens up a little bit more. Can you tell me why we're not seeing any villagers uh, around town? Oh, it's, it's just the time of the day. You know, it's... It's you know it's getting you know it's, ooh, flip, it's nearly already five o'clock. You know it's kind of kind of the end of normal business hours, and you know this day of the week it's not really one of our our busiest days. It's just I, you can kind of imagine this is one of the reasons I was willing to give you such a good deal. You know it's uh, not exactly got a lot of through traffic today. But Claude wants to do an in Claude does an insight check to see if this guy's being honest or he's trying to hide something. Yep. Um, 19. Yeah, he's definitely nervous. He's definitely nervous. He's he's, he's kind of making stuff up on the fly. Uh, this day of the week that it is, is actually, in, in, in comparison to the real world, let's call this like Thursday compared to your Friday, Saturday trading days. This would not be one of the, the slower days. N nothing triggering from divine sense. He's not like a fiend or undead. Give me a give me a description on that, please. Uh, I, just want, I just want to make one hundred percent certain for you. Uh, within sixty feet, um, you can detect good and evil. You can sense anything affected by the hallow spell, or know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within sixty feet. Just want to make sure. This off. Crazy. Crack the case open. Something ain't. Oh, you right. ruined his life. <laughs> I, you took everything from him. You ruined the whole town of flattery. I'm just happy I'm in the tavern on Thursday, Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> you kill yeah, that guy. I might guy, not be eating or drinking ring. anything from these folk just yet. Everything seems so pleasant, though. We gotta keep that in mind. He's well, using eerily. adjective. No, he didn't say eerily. I said I, eerily. I'm he saying said pleasantly. Eerily. Yeah, and everything that's is pleasant. Suspicious. That's uh, why I got up high and I'm scouting that the area because something. You would have done right that here. if it wasn't pleasant. Hey, you're right. I really thought activating that guillotine <laughs> would have at least elicited any kind of reaction. I wish Only I a had village of monsters it. reveals itself. You split, about you split time and space in half completely. <laughs> I, don't know. I also was going to keep the joke going when you said twelve or I said ten, and then you asked if it was gold. I was going to say no, ten goblin bodies, <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just to keep the joke going. Oh, here's a better description. When I click on it, it says yeah, the presence please. of strong evil registers on your senses like a noxious odor. 
powerful, good rings like heavenly music in your ears. Yeah, cool. Uh, it's both. Your your nose is filled with a stench. All right. Um, Quan uh, politely excuses himself. He's thank you for the potion, and I assume a voucher, right? Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely, vouchers. Um, Perfect. Could you do a performance check for me, please? Because you're trying to act calm. <laughs> Crap. Uh, <laughs> oh, ball stack. Uh, three. <laughs> sure, sir. You don't want to stay. Um, you know, it's it's getting late. Um, there's still plenty of business to be done. Well, maybe if I'm quick, uh, I can send my party over here before you close down for the day and do a little extra shopping. What do you think? I don't know. Maybe you could you could always shout for them at the door. You don't need to go to the tavern. I, I can I can call them over. Absolutely. I'm going to head towards the Claude starts walking towards the door. Let me just uh, shout for them real quick uh, without turning his back to the shopkeeper, just kind of casually like backing up. Okay. Uh, guys, and he's he's gonna slip. He's gonna slip through the door and see if he can get away before uh, before he realizes that the, he's he doesn't intend on coming back in. Okay, cool. Uh, Logan, um, you were interested in trinky dinks. I was. You were. Can I, can I go with him? Because I was also interested in trinky dinks. Cool. So you right, but now I've right. heard this call, and yes. I think I'm turning around and heading back. I was going to do so. I tell you, you're kind of thinking out loud. I'm not. I'm just sort of reacting based on what you're going to do. I have it that you're pretty much at the door because in the time that he was making the the sale and having the conversation with him, that that had caught your interest and you'd made your way towards that building. So, okay. but like I said. I'm not telling you where to go from there, but just in terms of an actual placement, <sighs> I have you about here now. And where Aren't is they, he? Don't, don't Aren't they right next? Yeah, yeah. Aren't, Aren't they, they right door? next to each other? Well, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, actually, there. Good point. Excellent point. They're right there. Right as you're about to go in, you hear Claude. Got, guys? Team? We a, yeah, we can get to Tricky Dinks <laughs> later. I want to... I'm, I'm, I'm going to go... Uh, Hey, what's up, Claude? Help him out. I'm gonna. I see them over at the next uh, door, about to go in. Hey, maybe before you go in, can, just before that happens, can Logan and Bodak please do a dexterity saving throw for me, please? You got it, boss. Dexterity. That's Nat one. Go. Cool. Oh, wait, where's dexterity? There it is. <clears throat> Look, twenty-three. Is that right? Is that possible? I, what's your what's your dexterity saving modifier plus? I I, I guess I rolled a twenty a nat tr- twenty plus three. Nat twenty. Anyway, so Pew. perfect. Bodoc, nat one. Yep. Cool. Um, <laughs> the sign that Logan was looking at that he thought said pristine gu- guillotine, but actually said trinky dinks. Yeah. That falls off the wall and lands right on top of you, and it's Beautiful. pinned you to the ground. Great. Uh, so you take three points of damage. It just looks like it's fallen off. So this this place that looks like it's been uh, maintained, that sign just seemed to fall off on top of you. Wait, how hurt is he? Three points of damage hurt. Three points of damage. But he like pinned, pinned to the ground. So okay, pinned to the ground. Fell on okay. me. Yeah. I so will make sure I can help him. He's on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would like to go back and uh, unpin him from the ground. So, uh, both of you, can you do a de- can you do a strength saving throw for me, please? I was oh yeah, I'm gonna try. Am, am I conscious? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to also push it off. Uh, okay. I got a ten. You got a ten. I got a six. Cool. Logan and Bodok, for some reason. You have now, you're now stuck 
to the sign. What? Right? These are both stuck to the sign. It almost like you touched it, and it almost like you can't pull back on it. I mean, it touched me. So, you're taking two points of damage because you're feeling something sharp on your back. Logan, me? you're feeling something sharp on your hands. Two points of damage. I don't like this, but okay. God help. Uh, don't touch it. It won't like. <laughs> Holy shit. What? Fine, as you are pulling away at it, it did say Trinky Dinks. It does say Pristine Guillotine. It does say Worthwhile. It does say. <laughs> Kibble's tidbits. It does say the pristine guillotine that's changing, it's flashing, it's constantly moving. This particular sign that you saw, read one thing, read another thing, is actually a mimic role for combat, please. The three okay. people in this fight who are on the other side of the town. So not when you say roll for Rian combat, do you combat. mean like just pick my weapon and no roll? Roll initiative. Roll initiative. So initiative. Just a D20. Okay, thank you. Plus your oh. initiative thing at the top. Side your initiative. Also, the, uh, you have an initiative modifier. Because Shit, yeah. three. Because he's been quiet yeah. this time. This entire Five. time. Where was v Viator? Where were? Where is Viator? As far as everybody. Uh, I could uh, be in the town center, but I can follow up behind Claude <coughs> and all of them. I noticed that okay. the sign changed, and I'll roll up to yeah. them. So basically, you were, you were kind of following these guys. You saw them. Let's imagine Tommy and Rain, if you want to go that way, they went into the tavern. Imagine you didn't see them go in there, so you don't know where they are. Mm -hmm. The other guys were in the town center making their way. Claude has shouted. Viator is making his way there. Uh, Viator, you're at least around a way of moving, of dashing, to get to where these guys are. So you can still roll for initiative. Okay. But you're going to take a movement. You, your your first action is probably going to have to be either moving towards it or some form of a ranged attack. Uh, okay, let's let's move towards it. Well, get yeah. a little close. Uh, I rolled a nineteen. Hell yeah! Logan rolled me. a five. I got a six. And then you add your initiative to it. Uh, yeah, my initiative's okay. added in. I rolled okay, a two plus three five. <laughs> Nice. I rolled a two plus four. My initiative was plus four initiative. Yeah. Hold on, what was your score again? Five. Five. Viator, what's your score? Six. Or tell. Tell. Cool. Uh, and then that puts um, logo on at the bottom there. Perfect. The sign with advantage, or the mimic sign, uh, rolled a, a not 20 on its initiative, so it gets to go first. Oh, great. So it's going to bite you guys again. Uh, but in this particular time, because it, it's target at the time, it's going to go for the one that decided to stand underneath the sign and get landed on. Uh, so it's going to take another bite, uh, or going to attempt to take another bite um, on uh, Bodok. You're, you're wrangling around. You're trying to stay away from that mouth part of the bite. Um, 18. That hits. Cool. Quite cool. Yes. I, I don't know if this is affected by initiative order. Can I use a bonus action uh, before that damage, uh, that attack hits? Uh, no, in, in, in order. So your initiative okay. does, but yeah, so, yeah okay. I get what you're saying. So imagine this thing did get the drop on you guys, so it kind of made sense that it was going first, but I did happen to roll a, a nat 20 on the order. So two, two more points of damage for Bodok, please. Lovely. Yep. Cool. Not doing cool. great. <laughs> All right. Um, as Claude, Claude sees the sign fall and sees them both, you know, visibly harmed, um, yep. and starts running without, you know, disregard for the, without regard for the the shopkeeper. Um, That's fine. And if I wanted to call out, do I need to use a bonus action as I'm running? Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm fine with shouting and giving instructions. As long as it's not a full-on, let's work out a plan and take the whole time to say it. You're like, saying something, giving it, give it an right. instruction. All Claude gets action. out on the way. It's just, team! <laughs> and just runs immediately um, and goes to attack this sign. Am I close enough to attack within my turn? Yes. Um, 
and use uh, divine might on it. Okay. As well. Cool. Um, so let me see how this works. Sorry. Where is my divine? Happy enough to wait for me as I um, basically gave up my my villain. If you okay, add it, so what is I. But if you found it, I was gonna say, are you looking on D and D Beyond? Yeah, I, for some reason it's not on my D and D character Beyond D and D Beyond sheet, but I have the book next to me to check the damage. Um, I rolled an eleven to hit. Just hit. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna do you know, do your normal damage and then add your smite. Okay. Jesus Wait, Christ. Just... And then smite is 2d8. Do this manually. So I rolled a 3 on my attack, plus 13 for divine smite for a total of 16. Perfect. How does this die? Um, the sword just plunges straight through the mouth, assuming there's not a yeah. limb directly under it. Yeah. Um, and then... Claude uses the the skewer spine and like tosses it off. Okay, fantastic. Send it flying. And basically as it's writhing, as it's writhing and squealing, blah, 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 blah. you can see it's the names are changing. Pristine, pristine tidbits, uh trinky worthwhile. Uh just kind of shrivels up and almost kind of sits like a like a spider would if it's dead. It's almost sort of really, really curled up. Uh with that there. Okay, cool. Uh, that mimic sign is is gone. Is dead. We win. Are we out of combat? Yeah, you're out of combat now. Oops. Uh Kalumas, do you think you can get some healing on on Bodak real quick? Yep. Something's something evil's here. We we gotta we gotta get out of this town. Give me one second. Let me figure out. This is a decent uh, beer. Man. Word. <laughs> 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 What'd you say? No, nah, I'm just <laughs> I, I was I, I'm just sitting in a bar. I have no idea this is going on. I'm just having drinks. Don't worry, you could you couldn't hear him anyway. No, yeah. Uh, or uh, cure, cure wounds. Uh, let me do, do cure wounds. Oh yeah. Ready? Tell me about it. I'm ready. I'm laying on the ready. ground still. To cure him. Eight hit points. Uh, I rolled. A D six plus two. And got eight. Or D D eight plus six and I got an eight. And Here, that's eight hit points that are healed. Uh that's yes. <laughs> <laughs> Rashin, can you help me out here? Yeah, sorry, so what were the rules again? Uh he was song... casting cure wounds. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's one D eight plus six. Okay. And I got an eight. So, so I, I rolled a two and then got plus six. Yes. So healed for eight points. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. That's oh, what okay. I thought. All right. Gotcha. All right. Claude Great. holds out his hand to help up Logan and Boduck. Yeah. Perfect. Bo <clears throat> I take his hand. Oh, guys, I'm, uh, I'm feeling something super evil from the shopkeeper next door. This mimic ain't right. We got to go. We guess what the fuck was that? What it just fell on me. What was that? At that moment, we're, I'm going to call it this moment as two things happen in different locations. Behind Claude, the shop door opens for Worth's Wiles. This doppelganger, towering individual about 610 steps out from the door has to shriek in has to duck in outside the door and just goes well it's not a slow business day after all and at that moment Rian and tommy in the bar they're having their drinks out comes the barkeep comes the barkeep <laughs> it's 
Oh, so instead, we... goes the barkeep as they transform before your very eyes. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. Right before you go, you hear two things. One, you hear a dog crying and wailing no! in pain. The second thing, the ground shakes around you. One of these barrels drops down onto the bar directly in front of you. And... Uh, uh, it's okay. I have to go into here. It's so massive it couldn't be contained in photos. This is a different folder. What tune? Oh, his special folder. His... He's in the kill party folder right now. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Where's my party wipe monsters? It's, it's like a Rolodex of... Oh, oh, that's rad. Whoa. This massive keg golem drops from the ground. Another mimic... Ready to meet the party in there at that moment. Different parts of the town. Not enough time to react. Let's see what happens. And for the both of you, the both parties, a certain guillotine in the middle of the town breaks free of its wooden structure. <laughs> Jumps into the middle of the Tyrant Square. Let's look forward to the next session, everybody. Ah! Uh, start with no! combat. Fuck yeah! Uh, oh my god! <laughs> but but I have a game plan. Yeah, write it down. Uh, I should be taking it's, notes. 